For years, the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressives Congress have dominated presidential elections, leaving other parties far behind. But this time, there are two political parties that might give the APC and the PDP a tough contest. The Labour Party and the New Nigeria People's Party seem to be marching the big two stride for stride. Faced with insecurity, economic downturn that has seen a drastic reduction in the purchasing power to a collapsing health system and a struggling education sector, Nigerians are desperately seeking to elect a president who will fix these problems. Different associations and unions are pitching their tents with candidates of their choice and former chairman of the Iowa Consultative Forum Major General Ibrahim Bata Malgui Aruna joins us now via Zoom to speak on the role of retired generals towards the 2023 elections. Thank you for joining us, General. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Now, in, let's begin this way. In recent times, we have seen uh, presidential aspirants meeting with uh, some retired generals, perhaps to, uh, I'm, you know. I'm getting some signal sound. Right. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, can you hear me, General? Yeah, today I'm just getting a, a sound on my... Yeah, okay, I think it's clear now. All right, that's fine. So I was saying that in recent times we have seen presidential aspirants uh, throng the home of uh, former heads of state and generals in, in search of uh, perhaps their blessings. And I'm wondering what this persons have in terms of electoral value that they bring to our elections in a democracy? Well, the, um, the democracy we have uh, was ushered in by a decree. And uh, these uh, former presidents were the authors of decrees that led us to the uh, 1999 decree that brought the democratic um, uh, constitution into being. And um, they have uh, a locus in the matter of uh, anyway one thinks about the jurisprudence of our 1999 uh, constitution. They seem to be consulting themselves because they know more about the background and the intent of the constitution than we do. And uh, the democracy at this stage of our progress and, uh, on the basis of the constitution is still being uh, challenged uh, by various uh, threats and by all the jurisprudence in interpreting the integrity of our constitution. Be as it may, they have consulted themselves like our uh, find founding fathers. They went to, to England. This time it's not Lancaster. This time they have gone to their private uh, hotels and uh, assets that they have that will maintain them while they have their consultations on our behalf, most likely at their expense. Unlike our founding fathers who got there on the expense of contributions from the uh, general uh, uh, public. Um, so times have changed. They have power, both visible and invisible. And I think while we're in the throes of the uh, 2023 election, we are most likely that at the North, um, there is no candidate from the military constituency. So the uh, leading spokesman has said uh, they have an agenda. Well, we look forward to agenda, although in a democracy, we are looking forward to the setting of uh, 
party politics, their manifesto, and uh, their programs. But if we are going to have a competition between uh, agendas and manifestos, uh, we are here to see. Uh, personally, I wish Nigeria good luck. I hope we will transcend uh, this uh, atmosphere and um, proceed with uh, democracy as best as we could, because no democracy is perfect, not even the American one. So we hope for the best and we can sustain peace and security and credibility of uh, the elections. Uh, General, uh, this is Samo uh, I just want to uh, get your own view uh, about uh, uh, the, the necessity of this general, because uh, we feel that the generals were running the country uh, with uh, a sense of uh, entitlement and a sense of autocracy. And what value can they bring to democracy when all they know in their lives is how to force people to do things? Democracy is how to let people do things themselves. Are they not uh, 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 old, old uh, forgotten uh, relics uh, for this time? Well, they are old relics, but they are not forgotten. As I said earlier, they are the founders of the uh, 1999 uh, Constitution, which was passed by decree. So they are the powers behind the force and the legitimacy of it. I think that when we are at this maybe terminal end, of uh, a military uh, politician leading the country, they have a lot to say as to the path of a true democracy where we are going to have successors to the various thrones um, being uh, full-fledged uh, civilian politicians. And I think that uh, where there is an invisible uh, government, there is also a ghost government. So they have, they have, in my view, a contribution to make that will ensure uh, uh, do or ma the, uh, the, the election. They still remain like the, um, the, the reference uh, uh, personalities. So they are playing a role and I think that role is to ensure that uh, we will sustain the progress we are making in the search for true democracy. And that uh, having, have, having seen both sides, having seen the dictatorial side and the democratic side, and having uh, enacted the constitution, which we are relying upon for the practice of uh, democracy, and they're still alive. And uh, I think they can still be held responsible to make contribution that will ensure that uh, our democratic uh, practice is, um, is urging on well and developing. All right, General, let, let me ask you this. Uh, a lot of people have said that the military ha ha had not justified all of the times, one after the other, all the times that they took over power in Nigeria. They have not been able to justify that. In fact, their coming into politics retarded the growth of Nigeria and the development because they were not experienced uh, in the politics and in the democratic leadership or governance, as it were. And uh, a lot of people point accusing fingers to the military why we are in the state that we are today. W what do you say to this? Well, I think people who are blaming the military may be as right as equally as wrong because the military did not by itself enter politics. It had been by accident 
of the evolution that ran from the elections of 1954, then the, um, the unfortunate uh, coup of 1966, so on and so forth. But I think within the responsibilities of the military, the preservation of uh, national sovereignty, the security of the people, and the search for their well-being uh, has been pursued under various programs of various uh, tenants. I think their principal role was to preserve the sovereignty of the Nigerian state and also to help it um, uh, continue on this path of progress. So I think their principal role was to preserve the unity and sovereignty of Nigeria, which they have done. The second issue is to evolve a democratic government, which they have done. Um, though we can question or blame them, is not um, getting the general left Publish uh, to endorse uh, the constitution or to contribute to subsequent refinement of it. Now, the difficulty, I think, is the amendments which have been pro proposed on the basis of our experience uh, are finding real hard knock in um, coming into implementation. Uh, the existing governors and the president are under oath. Uh, they are under oath to um, govern in accordance with the rule of law and the constitution, which, uh, which they do. I, I, I think it is not easy going, but uh, if the incoming politicians uh, exercise their powers responsibly, we can still refine the country and ensure there's peace and security. All right. And there's uh, constitutional governance. Are you still there, sir? I'm still here. All right. And I'm being showered too. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's still look at uh, this aspect of uh, the role of. Uh, former uh, military generals. Uh, there are those who believe that uh, their influence is narrow and restricted to their geographical location. Uh, their influence is waning uh, and it's stopped since 1999, looking at uh, the role General Abdul Salami Abubakar played when he brought in Ulushe Gwambasanjo. What do you say to this? Well, all the generals you, are, you have mentioned and who are relevant, uh, in one uh, council or committee or the other, where the leaders of this country uh, meet and discuss uh, the relevant issues affecting uh, the country. I don't think um, any one of them is looking for relevance. There are military politicians who have been uh, members of a political party uh, Obasanjo has had two terms and uh, wanted a third term, which was denied. Uh, so they are not, they are not uh, politicians seeking for relevance. And I said earlier, if they were the founding um, uh, authors of the constitution, the democratic uh, constitution uh, we are pursuing, then they remain uh, relevant as far as they are alive because they know some of the jurisprudence behind the behind the, uh, the development of our democracy. Uh, so I, I I I don't think they can be uh, brushed off um, with the wave of the hand. Uh, as I said also that if the coordinator uh, General or passenger uh, has said they have an agenda, ag an agenda. We have an election. Uh, the agenda may be um, uh, revealed to us in full or in part, and uh, one will wonder when this uh, agenda was uh, originated. However, we will uh, 
be looking forward to the progress towards the 2023 election. Um, maybe with tongue in the cheek, uh, hoping that there will be no conflict between the agenda and the uh, party political um, campaign and uh, exposition of their manifesto. Uh, all right, so you're, you're a witness to a lot of uh, the developments in the past decade or so with insecurity and the accusations that our military uh, has not uh, risen up to expectation. Um, what do you think has gone wrong with our capacity to really deal with uh, the, um, the insurgencies and the acts of banditry and kidnapping across the country, especially in the northern part of the country? Well, uh, your, your, your judgment or your opinion is yours. But I think within the capacity and the roles assigned to the various uh, military establishments and the security agencies uh, have performed within, within limits because uh, we may differ in um, determining our expectations. The, the, the um, problems of insecurity is a cumulative failure on the part of uh, good governance. And uh, we know it's gone on for 10 years. It has uh, consumed um, two, three uh, heads of, uh, of state and uh, is not abating. Uh, although the armed forces are putting their acts together and from my own point of view, if they had stayed on the basis of the rules assigned them by the Constitution and the laws, we probably would have uh, uh, achieved uh, 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 better distance in establishing peace and uh, security. The, the armed forces um, constitutionally are assigned with different rules. The police and other security agencies that have been created have uh, been assigned their different uh, rules in accordance with the constitution and the laws that were enacted. But uh, they seem now to be in a mixed bag of exercise of functions that um, there is no clear demarcation between the military and the police and other agencies. They seem to be entangled. And I believe there is uh, some notion in uh, 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 military forces or governance that uh, the armed forces and security can be entangled to operate All right. together in any manner of ways. All right, General, we, are, we, we have a constitution. We'll need we to are hold not a your union. We, are, for a bit. we don't have a military union of forces. General, you said something recently uh, which still has to do with uh, insecurity. You talked about that uh, this matter could snowball into a bigger problem if it remains fully unchecked. And you also said that uh, it is uh, part of the menu being served to de-democratize Nigeria. I wonder how you mean, if you could throw more light on that statement. I must apologize. I didn't get clearly the end of your, your narrative. Um, right. Well, um, I, I, I'm really not sure what you want me to, to answer. Right, still talking about insecurity. In a recent interview, you said that um, if this matter is not properly handled, it could snowball into a bigger problem if left fully unchecked. And then you also said that uh, it was part of the menu to de-democratize Nigeria. And I'm wondering if you could throw more light on that statement. I didn't make um, any positive statements as regards the intent or plan to democratize uh, Nigeria. But the total effect of what will discern, uh, what can be designed for insecurity continuing 
In the month now, it is uh, intensifying. Then, of course, you will get to a state of um, uh, uh, anarchy or, or civil war, or total lack of uh, confidence in the capacity of uh, uh, government to uh, deliver uh, governance. So I, I, I think uh, the speculation is right, because after 10 years or so, if the insecurity in, the, in all the its, uh, manifestations is uh, getting intensified, and uh, the government is uh, expending uh, budget and funds more and more to no positive result, then what we expect uh, totally is uh, perhaps the, uh, the other side, the, the terrorist side, may, may gain uh, uh, more command and uh, control of the state. And then where, did, where, where does that lead us? I think the, the, the most important thing at this stage is, the, is for the government to demonstrate its capacity to defend the security of uh, the state and maintain its uh, sovereignty and its authority uh, over all arms of uh, uh, government and um, uh, uh, shades of governance. And if that is lacking, then uh, the, the um, alternative government may force itself that before them, there will be a very heated uh, uh, competition for power through violence and anarchy and disorder. So managing it properly means asserting the powers of the state to control and command the institutions of the state that will ensure peace and security and well-being of the people. All right, General, uh, the, the military that you have been part of, when it comes to capacity and professionalism, I believe uh, right from the days of the pre-colonial and even the colonial period up until now, uh, the military has always gotten accolades uh, when it comes to their, their capacity. But we have a situation here, with the security situation here, where the military has tried, they have done everything possible, yet we still have this uh, challenge of insecurity. From your perspective, with the military that you know, that you were part of, what more can be done for the military in Nigeria to handle this insecurity once and for all. Recall in the early 80s, where we had the Netasine, it was the Nigerian military that drove out and pushed out all of these people, and it was put behind. What more can the military do today? Well, the military can, if they are empowered to do more. The role of the military, in so far as we are in democracy, is to be subservient to the civil and governing authority under the constitution and the law. So the military can do more, depending on how much capacitation and uh, empowerment that you give them, and how much you disentangle them from the rules that they are performing, which does not belong to the military per se. So, and I said uh, uh, in the past that the rules that is played by each military and, uh, and um, security agencies are well demarcated, but they are not well implemented. If they are well imp uh, implemented such that every segment performs its role and is, um, is coordinated and they, are, they, they have synergy, we can um, uh, we can take a good bite at the security situation, but you know that governors, elected governors, are in charge of security, and every other thing besides that uh, in the security chain, except the military, whose real role is external, uh, are subservient to to their control, their command, their assistance. 
um, and direction. So the governors have to sit up because yeah. we are not in martial law, we are not in state of uh, uh, emergency, and uh, the military cannot be singled out to perform the roles of all other agencies, immigration, custom, uh, the DSSS, et cetera, and et cetera. I, I think we should uh, uh, put uh, the square peg in a square hole or round, round the peg in a round hole. So speaking about putting uh, round pegs in round holes and square pegs in uh, uh, square holes, um, don't you think that given the nature of uh, the problem, that this is the job of the military, but the military should do it in the case of a declaration of emergency. Don't I you think disagree. that is the path to go? Sorry, I don't think so. I disagree. It's not the role of the military. It is not constitutional. It's not constitutional. When you have an ongoing democracy, it is not constitutional to vest with the military all those powers you are saying they can do. Of course, they have the capacity if they have to do it but they have to do it in a democracy as provided by law. Well, I want to say a case of uh, the law must be performed in accordance with the law. They are, they are in internal situations in support and under direction of the civilian democratic government. They are not on their own initiative to take uh, uh, issues and authority by themselves. All right, so I, I just want to, to ask uh, this question about, uh, about the role of the military, especially since the crisis of the 1960s. You know, you, you took part in the Civil War and uh, you understood what happened. When EROC um, uh, established the Unification Decree, Decree 34, it was supposed to um, throw away federalism uh, and create a unitary state. But the military flushed him out because they thought that it was not good for the country. Then we had years and years and years of uh, unitary rule, as though the military borrowed the idea from, uh, from Ironsi and flushed him out and took it as their own. Today, we still have problems with military, federalism. Please, please, please. Let me correct you there. I, I, I don't think the military took any guidance from uh, Ironsi. The unification decree was thrown out. Federalism has been maintained throughout. Even when we went to 12 states and 36 states, we have maintained some sibling uh, likeness of federalism, not unilateralism, and not confederalism. We are in a federation. Now we are in a federation of 36 states and the federal capital the territory. So it would be wrong to say that uh, the, the, the military took over the ideas of a unification decree and began to, to, to rule in those times. The military maintained its own unity. The military belonged to Nigeria as a whole, and it did not rule in accordance um, uh, with the various uh, uh, political divisions uh, that there were. So the military maintained its own uh, integrity as defenders of the Nigerian state as a nation of diverse people with diverse military. There is no tribal regiment anywhere. But that's the why we think it up to today. So but that is why many people are calling for true federalism today because we uh, much of the resources are in the center, much of the power decisions are taken from the center and they all they are all traced they back to the at, times of the military. They, they, yeah, yeah, you are at liberty. Uh, speaking as a military man, I'll tell you, you are at the liberty to amend the constitution and run it in accordance uh, with the uh, um, division of uh, uh, schedules of uh, powers as you wish. I don't think the military has intervened to stop any amendment to the constitution that will bring uh, the uh, the uh, practice of democracy and governance within the ambit of the structures that have been put together by the uh, three-tier three federalism which we now have. 
Thank you, sir. But uh, one more question before we go, sir. Um, many people associate you with what they call the Asaba massacre. You have uh, many times said uh, that uh, you are not aware of it. Why is it that the matter keeps coming up? I have answered this on television several times. It has been investigated by the United Nations. I have been interviewed by professors uh, uh, for the, um, uh, for the, uh, for the, for the uh, International Court. And I have uh, cleared the issue about Ibrahim Taiwo is not Ibrahim Haruna. Ibrahim Haruna was not there during the incidents where it happened in Asaba under the command of General Mutala Mohammed. So I'm not involved. I was not very, I was in, in that uh, command as GOC well after the incidents has uh, taken place and uh, well long after the uh, uh, the attempted crossing uh, in Onicha. Okay, thank uh, you very much for clarification and for helping us out here. All right. All right thank you. We must thank you. Uh, former chairman of the Arab Consultative Forum, Major General Ibrahim Bata Malgui Aruna, retired for your time. Among other um, things, I was chairman of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies okay. and Institute of International Affairs. Oh. Why have you joined me with Arewa? Arewa is not even a political entity. Yes, sir. Right. And the minister, right. and the minister <laughs> of the Federal you. Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so have, much. Have a nice day. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.